Hi, I'm John Craven with BevNet, and today I'm here in Beverly Hills with Lance Collins, who is the founder of Body Armor. So thanks for having me over, Lance. You're welcome. Good to see you, John. Good to see you. So I think, you know, just to kind of get some stuff out of the way here, yeah. I think, um, you know, just be great to kind of hear kind of how things are going and, you know, just give us whatever insight you can. I won't ask you, you know, sales or anything like that, but, you know, just kind of tell us where Body Armor's at after a few years in. Well, you know, we started out in, uh, really our first year was last year, 2012, and it was a learning experience, to say the least. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I partnered up with um, uh, Mike Rapoli uh, back in January of 2012. Uh, we had some product out in the market. Uh, Mike took a look at it with me, and, uh, we, you know, we, we basically changed the whole product line. Um, you can see from, if you can hand me that bottle, uh, we had what's called an overwrap to it, and it was uh, a really efficacious product with a lot of stuff in it. And uh, our core demographic, which we really, you know, kind of didn't know what, what that core demographic was, but it was young male, sure. didn't really appreciate all the uh, green tea catechins, the fiber, uh, the Herba Mate, it kind of left an insurgic aftertaste in your mouth. So just like every brand, whether it's Fuse or Vitamin Water, uh, we tweaked it maybe four or five times and, and here we are today with our new, our new product. And uh, we feel it's, um, uh, it's still very efficacious. Uh, we feel like uh, Body Armor is uh, created a new category uh, in the beverage business, i.e. the super drink. And uh, uh, we feel that the company's doing great. Um, this is our second year. Um, we, if you want to compare it to Fuse or you want to compare it to Vitamin Water, we're, 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 we're far beyond that in terms of sales. And, and uh, if you want to look at our distribution, we're in very narrow channels of trade. Uh, our strategy was to focus on the small format. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done that. We're, we're doing quite well in the small format. Uh, we're now venturing out into the larger format uh, with, a, with a strategy uh, that, that pretty much um, uh, has been devised. Uh, you'll see our product uh, in a lot of chains uh, in the East Coast, West Coast. Um, we've, done, uh, we've teamed up with uh, Dr. Pepper Snapple Group. Uh, we launched Northern California with them. Brand is doing great. You know, we thought, you know, we, we wouldn't make any mistakes out of the gate, but, you know, uh, we made a lot of mistakes. Uh, we've cr we think we corrected those mis mistakes from the formula to the packaging. Um, you know, this overwrap, when we started, we thought it was great. We thought it would look good on the shelf, but you needed a uh, Swiss Army knife to, to open the bottle. So it caused a lot of consumer dissatisfaction, to say the least. Uh, we went back to it. We redesigned it. I think we made it even, we figured, since we were taking the overwrap off, uh, we'd even make the product look better. Our new graphics, I think, are fabulous. Uh, I think it really is a lot of eye appeal at retail. And uh, another thing is pricing. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess mm -hmm. one of the things, we can talk about pricing too. I mean, you, you talk about it not being your you know first rodeo. I mean, it, it seems like the fact that it isn't your first rodeo has put you, and I guess now, you know, Mike probably under a, a bigger uh, microscope than your typical beverage entrepreneur that's just starting out, and maybe you can relate to that from the fuse days. But you know, it seems like they're, you know, kind of our haters of what you guys are doing just because you're not instantly successful as if you know other beverage entrepreneurs are. Um, you know, can you kind of compare it to you know the fuse days and? Also, just talk a little bit about kind of what challenges you guys face now in the marketplace. Well, you know, for me, for Fuse, I mean, I wasn't under a, under a microscope. No one right. knew who I was. Just some uh, dude out in New Jersey. Some dude working out of his house in New Jersey. Yeah. And, and, you know, I built it, and uh, it took a long time. Uh, it's never easy. Um, I think I mortgaged my house twice, maybe three times, and the bank didn't know it, uh, to make payroll. Uh, I know Mike uh, and Darius had similar experiences building vitamin water uh, you know they they were under a microscope as well um, the fact that you know we we they did it unbelievably uh, I think I was the first guy to sell a coke mm -hmm. and um, it was a great transition uh, are we under uh, more scrutiny I would say we are but you know what um, I feel like uh, you know I'm, I'm more motivated than ever 
I, I wake up every day uh, uh, with the idea of building this brand. Uh, is, is it, am I scared? Of course I'm scared. Uh, I feel fear just the way I did it at Fuse. Uh, I'm not so sure that Michael feels fear because you know, if he has, <laughs> I don't get it. But uh, I personally think that the playing field has changed when Michael and I started uh, our companies. Well, it seems like now you've got, uh, you know, a lot of people, well, people, big companies that are, you know, kind of in this never-ending game of deep discounting of their product. <clears throat> I mean, how does that impact uh, a brand like Body Armor that, you know, I I'm guessing you guys just don't have the ability to operate on permanent, like, you know, 10 for 10 or, or whatever some of these other brands are. I mean, how does that impact you? Well, first off, um, the, the, the pricing game has changed. Uh, um, you can't walk in a supermarket without seeing um, vitamin water at 79, 89, 99 sure. cents. Same thing for Fuse. Uh, we were a lot higher priced at the time. Uh, have they changed the, the, the nutrient blends of, of the brands? A little bit. Um, but still, uh, th their whole uh, pricing scenario has changed. And it's changed uh, for brands like us. Uh, you go into Whole Foods, you'll see a Suja, you'll see the um, uh, Synergy brands, mm -hmm. sure. and they're, they're expensive. Uh, some brands, Suja is $10 a bottle, $12 a bottle, if you go look at it. Um, you know, th there's room for those type of brands, I agree. Uh, they're not scale brands. Uh, I think they're, uh, they're, they do very well in the markets they're at, Whole Foods and the Natural Food Channel. Uh, we're not playing that game. We're playing uh, the scale game. And we started off at a high price point. Uh, we, we spent a lot of money uh, for our ingredients and our nutrients. Uh, we have 10% coconut water. Uh, we have a lot of stuff in, uh, in this bottle. Uh, can we sell for 99 cents? No. Can we do 10 for 10s? Probably not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do we? Do we? You know, are we going to retain our price point at two ninety nine, two sixty nine? Uh, I don't think so. I think that we have to really roll up our sleeves and get aggressive, more aggressive. And even at, for instance, a dollar ninety nine a bottle, uh, we're still a premium priced product compared to what's out there. Right, twice the price or more. Exactly, is, twice right. the price. Uh, uh, supermarket strategy will be a little less than that. So people ask me, how do you describe body armor? What, where do you put it, you know, in a store? And, you know, I refer back to what Mike Rapoli said when he first saw the product line. He ba and, and he's changed the product line with me. But, since, but the initial concept was, we don't want to be a sports drink because a sports drink to us is a flawed product proposition. Mm -hmm. Why is it flawed? Well, you all heard about Brogeny vegetable oil. Sure. We knew it was in there. It's a fire retardant. It's carcinogenic. It's it's something that like Sarah Cavanaugh, that little girl mm -hmm. from Mississippi, called them out, and it was headline news, New York Times, Wall Street Journal. It was on. I saw it on, uh, on NBC uh, with Brian Williams. Um, it's it's got you know most sports drinks. The leading sports drink ha is oversalted. Sure. Um, it's got way too much sodium. Artificial colors artificial flavors. Um, is it scientifically better? Th that's, that's up for a big argument as well. But <clears throat> we developed body armor uh, as a super drink. We felt that you know, we're more nutritious. Uh, we've got coconut water. We've got antioxidants. Uh, we've got vitamins. Uh, we've got lots of electrolytes. Um, we have other ingredients as well. Uh, and it sets us apart from, from the crowd. Uh, we don't want to be considered an enhanced water. We don't think there, there, there's much in enhanced water. Um, to, we think that's a flawed product proposition. We think that's healthy perception. Sure. And, 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 and we feel we're more healthy reality than, than those guys. So yeah, I mean, you know, we're trying to carve a new category. Uh, the biggest problem for us is where to place it in the store, whether it's convenience or supermarket. Um, we don't want to put it in uh, the, the sports drink aisle where you look down and there's some you know, my overspaced uh, products there, uh, and they're just you know 89 cents, 69 cents a bottle. You can buy a, uh, you can buy a 32 ounce for for 89 cents. So Pr practically giving it away there, yeah. Practically giving it away. 
So now that you know you've got uh, Micropoly more in the fold, and as you said, uh, kind of operations are shifting, you know, to kind of his wing out in uh, in New York. I mean, how do you sort of see that kind of? I mean, is that changing kind of how you guys go to market then, or is that just kind of you know giving more firepower to the New York market? I mean, what what is that effectively doing for the the company? Well, you know, I think you, you got to go with your, your your best team, and and Michael's kind of been a coach and a uh, quarterback at the same time. Sure. Uh, you know, I'll I'll see to him. He's he's done it before, bigger and better than than I have. Uh, although I've done it pretty big. Um, you know, uh, we think it's a we got a lot of talent in that New York office, uh, marketing uh, uh, and sales. Uh, we're doing well in New York. Uh, uh, I know, like the last couple of months, we've sold more body armor in New York just in convenience stores. Um, I would say uh, better than any month I've ever had with Fuse. Hmm. Uh, you know, vitamin water. Um, did really well in New York. It was probably their uh, seminal point of distribution, which pretty much fed the rest of the country. Uh, and I think that New York is a real important uh, uh, strategic point for us. We're not a direct business. Uh, we, you know, that's another thing. You, you know, you have, you have to field a lot of people in the market to get to satisfy the chains, uh, to get the brand out there. Um, not only do you need uh, um, you know, uh, sales guys in the street, you got to follow up with a lot of uh, demos, a sure. lot of field marketing. Uh, we sample a ton. I don't know how many, I don't think there's any other company out there sampling the way we're sampling. But you know what? We, we need to build brand awareness. Uh, we feel the best way to building brand awareness is to actually have the customer taste our product. We are convinced that once they taste our product, uh, we're going to get them. So aside from the kind of taste of the product, which I know you guys have kind of refined a bit since you started, uh, you know, what else is it that you feel is drawing the consumer to the brand at this point, um, you know, if it's not a sports drink and, and not an enhanced water? Well, first of all, when you start a new brand, you think you know what the DNA of, of your consumer is. And, um, you know, as, as time goes on, you know, you spend a lot of time in, in the accounts, and, you, and we have a lot of field marketing people. Sure. Uh, and we get a lot of feedback. Get some reality. <laughs> exactly. And <clears throat> we, we, we do get comments and we do make changes based on what we see. So I guess it's less about introducing the consumer to new flavors they haven't had and maybe just taking ones that they have had and kind of giving the body armor spin on it. Is that mm -hmm. kind of a fair way to say it? Well, this was, you know, originally this flavor was cherry citrus. Right. And it just didn't sell. Sure. You know, people don't want to drink cherry citrus. What is that? Right. And Orange it's, mango, it's, obviously, pretty proven. And then we came out with orange mango, and it's like our number one skew. Um, uh, this was strawberry banana guava, now it's strawberry banana. So, yeah, we're tweaking. We're tweaking, we're learning, we're still learning. Uh, we have what's called the Super 6 lineup, and uh, we're going with that, and we're, we feel very confident. So eventually, we'll, we'll probably have eight skews. Sure. Not, uh, not going to have any, uh, you know, super big line, I guess, is sort of you know, well, focusing on what'll, what'll sell. Basically. Right now, yeah. right now, we're really focused on our Super 6. We may go to uh, two more SKUs next year. Uh, I won't tell you the flavors, but we're working on it. And in three, four years, who knows? We might have 13, 14 flavors. We might have three shelves in the store instead of one shelf. There you go. Well, I guess as we uh, we wrap up here, I think it might just be great again to sort of ask if you, uh, you know, now that you are sort of on your second run here, uh, you know, if you have any other kind of advice to entrepreneurs who are, you know, thinking of getting in the game based on, you know, kind of what you're seeing out there now. Yeah, well, I would say, uh, you know, start small because... You know, it's really not that easy to raise capital. We were fortunate because we had a little bit of a track record. Uh, plus, we did a lot of internal stuff ourselves. Um, for guys getting into the business, and they, you know, you guys better have you know great packaging, a great idea, something that is is you know a little bit of a game changer. Um, again, you know, uh, go slow. Uh, I would go, you know, I wouldn't even do what we did. I would go in, you know, one or two markets maximum and figure out, you know, what's working and what's not. 
And I guess another maybe message might be to not be afraid to evolve, right? I mean, it seems like you guys are, you know, constantly tinkering and kind of not afraid to, to say it, right? Especially in the beginning. And it's, it's sort of like, you know, it's not the big eating the little, it's the fast eating the slow, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, we're nimble, we still, you know, we change quickly. If something's not working, we change it. Uh, and that goes for every asset, every facet of our business. Awesome. Well, hey, Lance, thank you very much. Thanks, John. Great to see you as always.